folks, and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today, we're making peanut brittle. Now, there are a few tricks to making good peanut brittle. Um, you want peanut brittle to be really crisp, of course. It should snap and break, but you gotta be able to chew it. And if you don't know all the secrets, your peanut brittle is not going to be very chewable. It's just going to be a brick. But good peanut brittle should snap easy, and you should be able to eat it. So here's what you need to make it. Uh, one of the first secrets is you want raw peanuts. And you do the raw peanuts because you actually are going to boil the peanuts in your syrup, which kind of flavors your syrup. If you use a peanut that's already cooked and then you put it in there, it's not going to be as good. Or if you just pour your peanuts out on your pan and then pour the syrup on them, it's not going to be as good. You want all that syrup to have a little flavor and it not just be pure sugar. Okay, and of course you need sugar because it's candy. So we're using a cup of sugar and a half a cup of corn syrup. And we have about equal parts peanuts and sugar. Now I've got kind of a generous cup of peanuts here. It's actually probably a cup and a quarter of peanuts. You can go a little bit more than that or a little bit less, but you don't want to do any less than a cup of peanuts in this and probably not any more than a cup and a half or it'll just be too many peanuts. We're going to use a quarter cup of water. We just need a little bit. We need just a little bit of butter, and that's more for flavor than anything else. And I've only got a tablespoon of butter here. I've got a pinch of salt, about a quarter teaspoon or so, because all in peanuts, a little bit of salt helps the flavor. And I've got about half a teaspoon of vanilla. You do want your syrup, like I said, to have some flavor in it. It's not good if it doesn't. And here's the secret. You want a teaspoon of baking powder. If you don't put the baking powder in it, you're not going to get all these little tiny bubbles in it like this has, and your peanut brittle is just going to be hard. Um, all those little bubbles in it are what makes it snap easy, and it makes it chewable. You can actually crunch on it and eat it. It's not just a brick. And the other real secret is you've got to get it hot enough. You want to get it up to a hard crack, about 300 degrees. Um, when you're stirring it, if you pick up your spoon, it's going to form fine threads that don't break apart. Um, they'll get finer than a hair and won't break. And it's going to be kind of, well, it's going to be this color. It's going to turn a real dark kind of amber color. And until it turns that color, you don't have it hot enough. Now, humidity does affect peanut brittle, like it does all candy. So you want to do more than just use a candy thermometer. You want to use, you can go ahead and use the candy thermometer. Make sure you have it up to 300 degrees. But more than that, make sure you get that color change and make sure you're getting those threads. Because the candy thermometer can't tell what the humidity is. And when it's humid, as soon as it gets cold, you want to crack it apart or break it up a little bit and seal it up in something airtight so that the moisture doesn't get to it because that candy will reabsorb moisture really fast and then it'll just get soggy and sticky and it won't be good. So make sure you seal it up in a bowl with an airtight lid or a pretty heavy plastic bag, Ziploc, get it, you know, seal it up tight. So Everything doesn't go in the pan at once. We're going to start with the sugar and the water, the corn syrup, the salt, and the butter. Now, once this comes to a boil, we're going to add in our peanuts. And then, once we reach that 300 degrees or whatever temperature it is when we get the right color and we take it off the heat, we're going to add our vanilla and our baking soda. And the baking soda, like I said, is going to give it these little bubbles. Now, when you cook this, you want to make sure you have a pretty heavy pan so the bottom doesn't burn and you also 
um, want to make sure you have a big enough pan because it's going to expand just like all candy does. Not as bad as that serviceman's candy, but it's still going to expand pretty big. Okay, I'm just going to start this on medium heat. You are going to have to have it on at least medium, maybe a little bit higher to get it up hot enough um, so that you reach that hard crack stage. You're going to want a pretty big cookie sheet to pour this out on after you get done cooking it. And you do want to smear a little butter on your cookie sheet. Just lightly butter it. And you're not going to have to worry a whole lot about getting this off the cookie sheet because once it gets hard, you just twist the cookie sheet like you used to do the old metal ice trays or plastic ice trays, even if you remember those. And your peanut brittle will pop right off of here and then you can bust it up into the size pieces you want. But just a little butter on it and you want to have this ready because once you get done cooking it, you're not going to have time to butter your cookie sheet. When you're making candy, it's a good idea to get all the ingredients together before you start because it's very, very easy to burn candy, um, trying to go find another ingredient, something that you didn't get out or um, getting out a jar of vanilla or something. But you definitely want to have everything together before it gets to that point where you need it because when this reaches temperature, you're not going to have time to go get your vanilla and your baking soda. You're going to want to have that ready to go in here. It will get thick so fast that you won't have time to get it out to put it in here. So make sure you get those other ingredients together. And if you start your syrup and you don't have them all, while it's at this point, before it starts to boil, go ahead and get those out really quick um, because it's not likely to burn right now. It just is not hot enough. So if you have to stop stirring at any point to go get something else, something you forgot, this is the point where you want to get it. Make sure you've got your vanilla, make sure you've got your baking soda, make sure you've got your peanuts. If you're going to use a candy thermometer instead of just stringing your syrup to make sure you have it hot enough, make sure you've got your candy thermometer have everything ready now. Okay, we're already starting to boil here and that just took a couple of minutes, I mean maybe three or four minutes. It doesn't take long to get it to a boil. So I'm going to go ahead and add my peanuts in because like I said, you kind of boil them in your syrup which helps flavor your syrup. And you'll notice um, as I'm stirring this, I'm being careful to get the edges and keep, or the sides of the pan, and keep the sides of the pan cleaned off. Also keep the edges of the pan cleaned. Um, where the sides and the bottom of the pan meet, you don't want to let the syrup build up down there because it will burn around that fold in your pan where the bottom and the sides meet. Um, there, there literally are cooking shows on television and the internet and you can watch cooking 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and never watch the same thing twice your whole lifetime I think. But there's a lot of um, misinformation too, stuff that gets started and one person will say it and because there are so many people um, sharing that information and it's shared so widely stuff kind of catches on. I was talking to Samantha we were making something and she said that she was watching um, some cooking show with a chef and he said when you're making candy don't scrape the edges of your pan because you'll get sugar crystals in your candy. Well <laughs> that's wrong on so many levels while you're cooking it, you want to scrape the sides of your pan. You want to keep all those sugar crystals cleaned off so that when you get your candy done, when you get your syrup up to temperature, there's not any sugar crystals on the side of your pan to get in your candy. If you let them build up while you're cooking and then you accidentally scrape them or when you're pouring your candy out of your pot on your cookie sheet or whatever you're cooling it on, Yes, you're going to get sugar crystals in the candy and it's not going to be good. 
But if you keep the sides of your pan clean while you're um, making your candy, you won't have any sugar crystals in it. There's no sugar crystals to get in it. A lot of y'all uh, ask about what kind of utensils I'm using or what kind of pans I'm using. This spoon is part of that um, utensil set that we gave several of them away back in the summer. And they gave us a discount on them. If you order them on Amazon, you can get a pretty good discount off of them. And you can use other Amazon coupons on them. But this is part of that set. And when I gave those away, I said, I can't wait to try this spoon in candy. And it really is the, it's the berries for candy. And some of y'all know what that means, and some of you don't, but trust me, it's good. Um, I, I'm able to keep the sides of my pan completely clean, and I'm able to keep the um, edge where the bottom of the sides meet completely clean, and keep the bottom cleaned off so that it doesn't burn on the bottom. And I'm going to put that link in the description of this video again. So if you're looking for a Christmas gift for somebody who cooks and you don't want to spend a fortune, they're pretty reasonable. And this one spoon literally makes the whole set worth having. It is great for candy. And I don't give stuff that kind of endorsement very often, but I love this spoon. And we're not making a huge batch of peanut brittle here. And this is easy enough to make that if you wanted to double the batch, if you wanted to make a whole bunch to give it away at Christmas time, you could certainly double this batch and wouldn't have any trouble um, stirring it or finding a pot big enough to put it in. I'm using a pretty shallow pot here. Um, and you can see it's plenty big enough even with it bubbling up. But it's easy to double the recipe if you want to make a lot for Christmas. There's just a lot of stirring now. And there's not any need in even putting the candy thermometer in this until it starts to get thick and it starts to turn colors. Because it's nowhere near hot enough until it starts getting thick. You know, I end all of my videos with put God first. Or remember to put God first. And I never really explain what that means. Um, most of my viewers that are my age or older, you understand and you know now what that means. Life gets so busy sometimes when you're young and you're raising kids that you literally forget all about God. You don't have time to pray. You um, don't have enough money to give. You, you just kind of put him on the back burner. And the Bible, all through it, it, it tells us that we are supposed to put God first. And like I said, those of us who are my age or older, we've figured that out. Um, if young people wonder why older people don't seem to have as much trouble in life as they do. It's not just because we're older and we learn more. It's because we finally learned not to get out of bed without praying. Um, and, you know, some of us have arthritis too, so it takes us a minute to get out of bed. We might as well use that time for something. <laughs> Jesus taught us that we are to pray daily for our needs. That's in the Lord's Prayer. When, um, his disciples asked him how we're to pray. We're to pray for our daily needs. Give us this day our daily bread. Well, it don't make any sense to pray for your daily needs at the end of the day. You start the day by putting God first and praying. Um, 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, Whether you eat or drink, whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Um, in Psalms, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. When you learn to put God first, when you learn to start the day, don't put your feet on the floor or till you've done ask God to put His on the floor first and go in front of you. Um, let me follow you when I, before I even get out of bed today. When you finally learn to do that, you would be amazed at how much easier life is. Um, how many fewer obstacles you run into. 
And I know how hard that is when we get busy. And I'm talking about this now because of the holidays coming up. We all get busy. We've got 10 million things to do before we get out of bed. And it take a few minutes before we start our day and spend that time with God. That's really hard this time of year. But for me, I know that when I do that first, I get a lot more done during the day. And when I do that first, I face a lot fewer obstacles. Now, I'm not going to say the whole day goes smooth and I don't drop stuff and spill stuff and make messes. But the day really does go better and I get a lot more done when I put God first. And that's why I say that at the end of every video. Remember, it just makes life easier. And it's one of those basic biblical principles that when you do it, when you learn it, when you finally get it, that that's what you need to do, it, life just kind of smooths out. And old people don't have it easier than young people because our kids are raised and, you know, or maybe a little more settled in our lives. It's because we finally figured that out. That's one of those very hard life lessons. Okay, we're starting to thicken up now, but we still don't really have that amber color that I'm looking for. So we'll get our candy thermometer out here and kind of see where we're at. You can see I'm kind of starting to fold it now instead of just stirring it. And when I stir it, you can actually see the bottom of the pan because it's getting thick and it's moving it off the bottom of the pan when I stir it. We're at about 275 degrees here. And the main thing we're looking for now is that we're looking for that color change. We want that kind of yellowish brown color in here. And I'm getting close to that 300 degree mark. Now it's a little humid here today. It's getting ready to rain. It hasn't rained yet, but the humidity is definitely increasing. Now if you're somewhere where it's really, really dry, you can probably stop this right at 300 degrees and you'll be good. But if you're somewhere like Georgia or Tennessee or Alabama where there's quite a bit of humidity, especially if it's about to rain, you're going to want to get it up a little bit hotter than 300 degrees. Now there on my candy thermometer it says I'm at 300 degrees, so I don't need to keep that in my way anymore. But you can see here I do not have a real brown color yet, and I really want that brown color. I do have some threads there. I know you probably can't see that, but I picked up that candy thermometer and it has a string all the way from the candy thermometer down to the cup that is not broken. That's what you're looking for. Okay, now I'm getting the brown that I want. If I stir it really fast, you can see it kind of. That's what I want right there. And it's super thick already. So I'm going to turn the heat off and add my vanilla while I'm stirring. And my baking soda. Now you got to work fast here. Alright, see what that baking soda is doing to it? It's foaming it all up. That's what makes it good and crunchy, but edible. You can eat it. It's not like a rock. It won't bust your teeth out. Don't stir it too long or it'll get so hard you can't pour it. Now, maybe you can see some of these strings I'm talking about if you look at the pan there, how it's stringing down to my cookie sheet. That's, you got to have it that hot. 
Okay. Now working quick, spread it out a little bit. pretty good there. You don't have to get it super thin because you want peanuts still to be in your brittle, but you have to spread it out a little bit because it gets thick so fast that it'll be all piled up just in the middle of your cookie sheet. But you can see there it's about right. It's probably not much more than a quarter inch thick in the thickest place. So you want to let this cool for uh, at least 30 minutes and in 30 minutes like I said when I started the video you can just twist the pan a little bit and your peanut brittle will pop right off the pan and then you can break it up into pieces and you can feel under the pan and see that it's cooled down but it should snap I mean really easy just like that and then get it sealed up quick before the humidity gets to it this is a really easy candy. It does take a little while. You're probably looking at close to 30 minutes of stirring. <laughs> close to it, not quite. But give this a try. It also makes really good homemade gifts and it's good to add in to um, a variety of candy if you're giving away candy tins or something. Thank you so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And while you're getting ready for the holidays this year, remember, put God first.